Alexa, I'm too hot. <laughs> and here's how I made that. A quick disclaimer, I'm not being cruel, my cat absolutely loves water and playing with water pistols is one of her favourite games. At the time of putting together this video, the UK is going through a heatwave and that got me thinking, what is the geekiest way I could possibly keep cool in this weather? I thought it would be really good if I could somehow rig up a water pistol to spray on demand. I've seen a number of other solutions online which tend to be based on finding a special electronic spray head and hacking into that. But instead, I decided my solution would use a standard off-the-shelf in Asda miniature water gun. This cost me £2. I then needed some way to pull the trigger and after a bit of research I found the SG90 5V servo for £3.15. I've never used servos before so this is all new and exciting territory for me and when it arrived I proceeded to hook it up to ESP Home using a faithful D1 Mini and the sample code from ESP Home's website. With that wired up and ready to go I had a quick test and I think overly childlike is probably the best word to describe me at that point. Amazing. On the subject of being childlike, I then needed to construct some sort of housing for all of these components, and the best prototyping material available is of course Lego. The servo on its own isn't strong enough to directly pull or push the trigger, so I needed to rig up a lever system, and I built the whole mechanism for this out of Lego. I think it's best I show you around the build now. I started by creating a housing for the pistol itself, a structure that would hold it tight in place so as when the trigger is activated it won't slide around at all. Hidden inside that section is a fulcrum for a lever. You can actually see this yellow rod right here. Um, I've tried to leave as many of the working components as visible as possible because it makes it easier to show you how it works and it also looks really cool when it's in action. Uh, but the fulcrum itself needs to be embedded within a strong group of blocks. To pull that rod backwards I needed to turn the rotary action of the servo into a linear action and this piece of Lego here is able to slide back and forth. The servo has been wedged in here and one of the plastic head pieces that came with it is screwed in place. Getting the position of that piece correct took quite a bit of trial and error. Um, you'll see alongside the movable piece that there are some grey rods sticking up. Uh, the head on the actuator makes contact with those grey rods pushing the movable piece back which in turn pulls the yellow rod and fires the trigger. That's all wired up to the D1 Mini which I have hidden just down here. Right, I've taken all the water out of it and plugged it into some power so as I can show you what all that mechanism looks like when it's in action. Now let's look at the electronic side, starting with the wiring diagram. In this project it's very simple because there are only three wires. The servo needs to connect to the 5 volt and ground pins on the D1 Mini for power and then the orange wire from the servo connects to the D1 pin. And for the configuration file to get this working, you first have to define the output pin. So I scroll down here, you can see this section here. Uh, I'm telling it I'm going to use pin D1 and I'm going to use pulse width modulation. Then we create a servo object here, telling it to use the output that we just defined above. Now to the fun parts, uh, we ignore the number entity here which is just for testing and take a look at these buttons instead. This first button uh, calls a script called fire pistol once when it's pressed and this second button called water pistol rapid fire calls that same script five times but with a 300 millisecond delay between each call. Now that script that those buttons are calling is here. Uh, all it does is set the pistol servo position to 87%, wait for 200 milliseconds and then set it back to 0%. 
Those positions took a bit of trial and error, just like the position of the servo headpiece uh, itself, and the delays are tuned just right to allow a nice, fast, rapid fire action. Once installed to the D1 Mini, ESP Home will present a device to Home Assistant. You'll see the test servo control and the two buttons we configured. Uh, I've added those controls to a uh, card on the dashboard. As you can see here, the pistol servo control um, it presents itself as a number slider, uh, but the other two buttons are just press buttons that you can press, once for firing once and once for the rapid fire, which does five in a row. I know, I could have made it look a lot prettier, but I did raid my son's Lego box, so I had to use what was there really. You could expand on this idea by maybe attaching a motion sensor to the microcontroller which would let it fire when someone walks past, or you could wire in a second servo that lets you control the direction you're firing in. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, goodbye.